what what do you what, what made you want to stream on Twitch though? What actually what was like the moment when you said, "Hey, I'm going to be I'm going to do this?" Um I think COVID was uh, a big important factor because I was kind of stuck at home. Um I was about to kind of launch a restaurant with a, a couple of friends of mine. We were really serious about it. And COVID happened. There was nothing to do. I was started playing video games at first like Fortnite and stuff, Rocket League. Then I said like, "Well, I have time. Let me just get back into poker." and um i enjoyed it um but not not as much as i thought because you're kind of stuck at home playing it i got second in a wpt online for like three hundred thirty thousand. it's kind of life-changing uh, i actually built the par with that money i was just like oh cool yeah i'm gonna do what i really want to do with this <laughs> and that's when i realized that like if i want to keep doing this and i want um people to discover the game the same way i did just by you know playing it for fun uh, I need to try to create a positive vibe around it. You know, I want people to discover the game and realize that it's not a very overly technical or difficult game. You know, it's very easy to get into it, but then you can slowly get better throughout time. And the key moment that changed everything for me to decide that, like, I'm going to stream was simply that I was watching someone stream and I was playing against them heads up and it was super entertaining and had a lot of fun and he knew who i was i actually like used to buy his action and stuff so we're chatting back and forth shout out to slayer dog 91 i think joshua hosel and what playing against them heads up while watching the stream just made me realize like it's so much fun like this is just great i want to be part of this more i don't need to i don't want to depend on another streamer i can just do it on my own and that's what really got me into it what uh what was the signature moment for you on on stream in terms of like a score audience size um I, I think a signature moment i would say was there was one tournament where uh i think i got second place for a lot i think it was like one hundred thirty thousand or something but it was a tournament that i wasn't technically supposed to play and uh I ended up playing it. it. It was day two at a 7 a.m. right after Valentine's Day. I had gone out with my wife. Uh, we had a very late night. We both got sick from food slash drinking. I had one hour of sleep, had to drive back home basically at 6 a.m. Play this day two. And I also sold, I think, 20% action um, just kind of for like for fun, I guess. Uh, I just wanted the viewers to be part of it and it, the cost was extremely low because it was a very low a low buying term i think it was a hundred dollars or a hundred dollars or something yeah i ended up getting second for a lot and like the people that bought a lot of people bought action um there was so much like support behind me on the final table and um this stream specifically is probably the worst i've ever felt in my life because i was on no sleep hungover was kind of sick as well but yeah. the energy of the stream, the people, you know, I launched the stream on a, I think on a Sunday at like 12 PM and I had like a thousand five hundred people watching and everyone cheering me on. And I'm like, okay, I, you know, if I didn't have that type of energy, I either would have like, you know, pumped it off the tournament or just like fell asleep. Cause I was so, I was that tired. And, um, it made me realize like I'm, I'm performing better when there's other people kind of involved. Like if I can affect someone else's life in a positive way, like that's all I want to do. Um, because my, a lot of my success comes from watching uh, or being inspired by other poker players that kind of, you know, put out really uh, good free content out there or, you know, just seeing someone deal with a massive loss life on television and just walking away as, as if nothing happened. Like that's just, unique you know how does someone mentally cope with that and how did you get the deal with gg poker like how did, how fast like when was your actual first stream and did you reach out to them did they reach out to you and how did that come about um i started in june 2021 so like a year four months ago oh wow. and initially i was just streaming uh just to give it a try like for fun uh, i i really thought i was gonna only stream for like two months that was my plan actually i want i was gonna just try it then enjoy summer and stop but um, I started getting a lot of viewers uh, quickly, and then I had a couple of really unique streams where, like, I I made a heads up in a big tournament where it was like eighty thousand, and the guy was sitting out. Uh, he he lost connection, so we're four-handed. He loses connection. Then I knock out the two other players, and now I'm heads up against 
uh, wow. this known pro. And I was just, there's like 700 people watching. I'm like, who, who wow, is this that? is ridiculous. Uh, Nick Maimon. Oh, yeah. F U 15. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, this is nuts. Like, I don't know what to do in this case. But like, I know that he lost connection. Like, it's not like he's just sitting out because he's drunk or something, you know, like, it's it's really unfortunate. And I thought like, what would I want someone to do if I lost connection, you know? Uh, and like a part of me, uh, you could say a na naive part of me, but a very optimistic part is like, well, I, I hope that someone will understand that like I, can't, I couldn't control the situation. Maybe I lost power. Maybe I lost internet. And hopefully they kind of, you know, you know, reward me or something like that. So I actually gave, uh, I said on stream, I'm going to pay him out his ICM value. I think it was like $8,000 or something, even though he's sitting out. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to pay him 8,000. I start raising every hand, obviously. He comes back with like two or three big blinds left. And he's like typing in chat angry, you know, like, oh my God, I, I lost power. And I was like, don't worry, dude. Like you're, you're still getting your money. And I think that's when like things really changed for me because that was the moment where everyone's like, wow, you can't believe like Bear Uzi did this. But in my head, it's like, this is what should be done. Like poker is a beautiful game there is a lot of like negativity around like scamming and whatnot but like if we want to change it we need to do these type of things when we get the right. opportunity there any impulsive purchases it sounds like you just hit a huge score you bought a you made yourself a dream man cave but obviously a lot of value out of that and that background you have there which is nice but do you is, is there any other like growing up did you ever like buy a car or do something like you hit a score and spend a lot of money going out something ridiculous any any major purchases are we always pretty yeah <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, this was like a a plan that I was actually in the making already before the score, but it was supposed to be a much smaller thing. It was just a plan during COVID, like, oh, you know, we can't even go outside because of lockdown. Let's just start work on fixing up the house. I had a big score. It's like, okay, well, let's have the dream thing now instead. Um, in other moments, like when I won, I kind of reward myself with travel a lot. I really enjoy traveling. This year, like I've been traveling, uh, had a good year in terms of poker while I was streaming. And I've always kind of like uh, committed to having a trip to go somewhere with my wife or even alone. Um, I really wanted to go see like uh, football matches in the UK, Champions League. And I went uh, twice this year, which before I've only gone once in my whole life. Right. So, but these are plans that I um, kind of make before even hitting the score. And I think that's super important for, you know, up and coming players is, Take a bit of time. Just take one week. Don't play poker and think of what you're trying to achieve. Like, what is your end goal? Like, you want to have a house. Let's say you want to have a family. You want to do these travels. You want to buy yourself a new car. Write it down. If it helps, put it on a board right next to your screen. And then when you play and you, you meet these goals of winning a big score or whatever, instantly go and do them. Don't, don't push it back like, oh, maybe I'll do it in a couple of months. Because if you don't reward yourself, you're just going to keep playing and playing and playing. And what about live poker? How, how, how is your live poker sense? You live in, you go to playground and you're in Montreal area sometimes and have played there, but what, um, how often are you getting to play live? Um, I'm, I'm, I made a rule. So I just came back from EPT London, uh, went there for 10 days. And since then, instantly made a rule that like, I'm only going to go to places where I actually enjoy not playing poker. And in London, it was really hard because weather is not great. Like it depends on the part of the city. If you don't know the right people, there's not much you can do. So I'm only planning to go to like fun live events like Bahamas, um, maybe like Monte Carlo where it's going to be nice weather, like new locations and like kind of exotic places where if I don't, if I wake up and I don't want to play poker, I can, I can just walk out to the beach or walk and see some like cool right. castle or something. Right. Um, and Vegas of course is like a must. I, I, I told myself I wasn't going to do Vegas in 2023, but I had like a, one of the most, the most ridiculous experiences ever this summer in Vegas that, I have to follow it up. Like I saw my close friend win the hundred K against Phil, Phil Ivy. Uh, my other friend, like make the biggest court of his life. Another friend win the bracelet. And then I was railing from day five when Espen won the main event. So Sick. like that's yeah, you're, me you're, mentally, it, you know, it's there <laughs> for the taking. How is, is it from the beginning though, when you started playing poker, was your family very supportive or did you actually said you kind of had other jobs, right? You were doing other things. Where yeah, uh, uh, supportive. No, I mean, uh, you know, I mentioned I'm born in Lebanon, so like Arabic background, um, 
my like my family is half Muslim, half Christian. Both of them don't really agree with poker. Uh, when I first started, like they just viewed it as like uh, a let's say a negative hobby that I had. Right. Slowly, like while I was in school and I was working in hotels, uh, I was still like making. I would play like once a week and I would win like a tournament. So I'd be like, oh shit, this is great. And I would go travel, use that money and travel. Then I started using to invest into real estate. And I think that's when they kind of like realize like, hmm, all right, this might not be a bad thing. Um, the WPT score in 2020, like during COVID, that one also changed a lot when they saw that like you can make a lot of money. But, right, you know, non-poker people don't think of long term so like you see someone that has won let's say 500k in three years um they and then you tell them that you made 200k in one day they'll value 200k more than the 500k just because right. it's in one day right but like every poker is just a long-term thing if you play it once or twice a week for over 10 years and you're a good player you should most of the time make a lot of money and like that's why i think more, <clears throat> more people should do it as a hobby if they can, because it's just a very positive thing to their life.